In this last part of Topic 6, we will discuss the solution of solids, which is another application of the shrinking core model. This is important because there are many applications where you need to dissolve solids and you need to calculate how the size of the particles change with time as they dissolve and how long it will take for them to dissolve completely. Example applications include dissolving solid reactants into the bulk liquid so that they can react with other reactant species. In pharmaceuticals, you will need to know how long it takes to dissolve a tablet in the stomach. And for catalyst regeneration, you may have solid deposits completely covering your catalyst pellets, and you may want to remove them using a solvent. So let's look at this general case where we have solid particles, which we will denote as B, being completely dissolved in a solvent, which we will call A. Solid dissolution could be a physical or chemical process, and here we will consider chemical dissolution. So A will react with B to form dissolved B. We will also assume that the reaction is first order in A and zeroth order in B. In order for A to react with B, it must diffuse to the surface of the solid B. So here, we will assume that the solid particles are spherical, and we will express the model in terms of the diameter D of the particles. We will show later that the time it takes to completely dissolve a solid particle with a diameter D subscript I is given by this expression where alpha is a constant that depends on the rate of the reaction, the bulk concentration of A, and the molar density of the solid B. And D star is given by this expression. You will see shortly that D star is defined as the diameter when the mass transfer resistance and reaction resistance are equal. This model was derived assuming that there is no shear stress between the particles and the fluid. This will be the case when the particles are small enough that they move easily with the fluid motion or if the fluid is stagnant, so for example, when a tablet is dissolving in the stomach. We will write a material balance which will result in a differential equation describing the rate of change of the particle diameter with time. And we will solve it using the initial condition at time t equal to zero, the initial diameter of the solid particle is di. We have the following reaction. A plus B goes to dissolved B. A is our solvent and B is our solid particle that is being dissolved in solvent A. An important thing to remember is that our solid B is non-porous. So that means that all reaction takes place at the liquid solid interface. We're also given that the reaction is zeroth order with respect to B and first order with respect to A and that there is no shear stress between the solvent and the solid particles. So say this is one of our solid particles, B, which is being dissolved in solvent A. So next to the external surface area of our particle, 
we can draw a stagnant film of solvent A. So first, we will look at the liquid-solid interface or boundary here. So since there can be no accumulation at the interface, since the interface is just a surface, not a volume, so there's no accumulation there, we can say that the flux of A arriving at the surface, so we will denote the flux as W A in the radial direction, this must equal the rate at which A is consumed. Okay, so we can write the flux of A arriving at the surface of the solid B. This is equal to the rate at which A is consumed. So from topic 4, we know how to write the mass transfer through a stagnant film. So that's just Kc, which is the mass transfer coefficient times the driving force. So that's the concentration of A in the bulk minus the concentration of A at the surface. So negative RAS, we can write that as Kr, which is the reaction rate constant times CAS. So now we can solve this equation for CAS. We can write this as Kc, CAB minus Kc, CAS is equal to Kr, CAS. And then solving for CAS, this is equal to Kc divided by Kr plus Kc times CAB. So now we have an expression for the surface concentration. So we can write flux is equal to the rate of consumption of A. This is equal to Kr times CAS. But we can substitute this expression in for CAS. So we have Kr, Kc, divided by Kr plus Kc times CAB. And then we can divide the numerator and the denominator by KRKC. So we can write this as CAB divided by 1 over KC plus 1 over KR. So note that the denominator here, this is a sum of resistances. Okay, so 1 over Kc is the resistance due to mass transfer, and 1 over Kr is the resistance due to the reaction. It will be useful to express Kc in terms of the diameter of the particle, D. We can do that using the Frustling correlation. So Frustling correlation, so we have the Shearwood number equal to 2 plus 0.6 times the square root of the Reynolds number times the Schmidt number raised to the power of one third. So we assumed that there is no shear between the solvent and the solid particles. So we can drop this term. So it means that the Reynolds number is small because it's either the, the solid particles are small or the velocity of the fluid is small or the fluid is stagnant. The so Reynolds number is low. So that means that the Shearwood number, which is equal to Kc times the particle diameter divided by the diffusivity, this is equal to 2. So therefore, Kc is equal to 2 times the diffusivity divided by the diameter. So now, we will define D star. Okay, so D star is the particle 
diameter when mass transfer or the resistance due to mass transfer is equal to the reaction resistance. Okay, so that means that 1 over Kc, this is the resistance due to mass transfer, is equal to 1 over Kr. This is the resistance due to the reaction. So 1 over Kc, so using this, 1 over Kc is D over 2DE. And we use D star because we're writing this expression, 1 over Kc is equal to 1 over Kr. So the resistances due to mass transfer and reaction are equal. So this is equal to 1 over Kr. So we can solve for D star. So therefore D star, okay, this is equal to 2 times the effective diffusivity divided by Kr. So now, we can express the flux or the rate of reaction in terms of the particle diameter. So let's do that. So we have the flux, which is equal to the rate of consumption of A. So this is equal to... So this time, instead of dividing the numerator and denominator by Kr over Kc, we will just divide it by Kc. The numerator will become Kr. In the denominator, we will have Kr over Kc plus 1 times Cab. We can write this as Kr. Okay, so I, I will write the 1 first, 1 plus, and then we have Kr. And then Kc, okay? But Kc is equal to this. Okay, so here we will have 2 times the effective diffusivity times the diameter. Okay, but this one, Kr over 2dE, this term here, this is equal to 1 over d star. So therefore, we can write this as Kr divided by 1 plus d over d star times Cab. Okay, so now this is our flux or the rate of consumption of solvent A in terms of the particle diameter d. And we will use this later when we write the material balance for the solid B. Okay, but for now... By looking at the diameter and comparing it with D star, we can say whether the process is limited by mass transfer or reaction rate. So we have this relationship. So Kr over Kc equal to D over D star. So how did we obtain this relationship? So we can compare this with this. Okay, so we have Kr, Cab, and then we have 1, and here we can see that Kr over Kc is equal to D over D star. Or, just replace Kc by this, 2DE over D. Okay, so let's do that. So Kr over Kc, this is equal to Kr, and Kc is this 2DE over D. So we will have Kc is 2DE and then we have the diameter there. Okay, so again, this term here, okay, so Kr over 2DE, Kr over 2DE. Okay, so this term here is 1 over D star. Okay, so we will get this relationship here. What does this tell us, this relationship here? So it tells us that when the particle diameter D is greater than 
T star. So again, D star, this is the diameter when the mass transfer resistance is equal to the reaction resistance. So when this is the case, so you can see here, okay, using this relationship, we can say that Kr is greater than Kc. So the reaction is faster than the mass transfer. So therefore, this is mass transfer limited. And when D is less than D star, from this relationship, Kr is less than Kc. So mass transfer is faster than the reaction. So this is reaction limited. So note that as your solid particle dissolves in the solvent, the particle diameter changes. So at first, the process will be mass transfer limited okay, until the particle diameter reaches D star. Okay, again, D star, you can calculate that from the effective diffusivity and the reaction rate constant. And when your particle diameter becomes smaller than D star, then it will be reaction limited. Let us now write our material balance for our solid particle B. We will write our material balance over the whole solid particle. So our control volume is the entire solid particle. So remember that the diameter of the particle is changing with time. The diameter is decreasing with time because the core is shrinking. Our goal is to determine how the diameter changes with time. So let's write our mass balance. We have accumulation equal to in minus out plus generation. There is no B going in and out of our control volume. So we can drop these terms. So we only have accumulation equal to generation in our material balance. So let's write out the accumulation term. So we'll have the derivative with respect to time of the material within the control volume. So we can write the volume of the particle easily. We assume that it is a spherical particle. So the volume is pi d cubed over 6. d is the diameter of the particle. And we can multiply this by the molar density of the solid. So the term in the bracket is the number of moles of B within the control volume. Rho B is the molar density of solid with units kilomole per m cube. The generation term we can write as the rate of generation of B within the, the control volume. The S here denotes that the reaction takes place only on the surface of the particle. This is the rate of generation of B with units kilomole per second per meter squared of the particle. So we need to multiply this by the area of the particle. So again, the reaction only takes place on the external surface of the particle because the particle is non-porous. So the area that we need is pi d squared. So let's take out the constants of the derivative. So we'll have pi over 6, rho b, dd cube over dt, 
and this is equal to the rate of generation of B times pi d squared. Let's evaluate this derivative. We need to use chain rule because the diameter d is a function of time. So we'll have pi over 6 times the molar density. And then evaluating this, so first evaluate the derivative of d cubed, so that's 3d squared. And then we need to multiply this by the derivative of d with respect to time. This is equal to the rate of generation of b times pi d squared. And then we can cancel out some terms. So pi will cancel out with this. d squared will cancel out. And then the 3 will cancel out with the 3 here. And there will be a 2 in the denominator. So therefore, dd by dt, this is equal to 2 times RBS double prime divided by the molar density of B. So in order to solve this differential equation, we first need to express the rate of generation of B in terms of the diameter of B. So how do we do that? Okay, so we need this expression, RBS double prime as a function of the diameter. So we can assume that for every mole of A, again A is the solvent, for every mole of A that arrives on the surface, one mole of B reacts. So therefore we can write the rate of consumption of A is equal to the rate of consumption of B. And earlier, we wrote an expression for the rate of consumption of A as a function of the diameter D. This one here, negative RAS. And this is the expression that we wrote. This is a function of the diameter d. So we can write this as equal to kr all over 1 plus d over d star cab. So this is equal to negative rbs. So we can use this to express this rbs here in terms of the diameter d. So we can write dd by dt. This is equal to, note that we have a negative sign here. So we have negative 2 kr cab. We have the molar density times 1 plus d d star. So at this stage, it would be good to check that dd over dt is negative. This is negative because the core is shrinking. So we have a negative sign here. Kr, Cab, they're always positive. Molar density always positive, and then the diameter is always positive. Okay, so this star is also always positive. So this whole term on the right-hand side is always negative. So that's correct. Let's define alpha as equal to 2 kr times cab divided by the molar density. So we can write our differential equation as dd over dt, this is equal to negative alpha over 1 plus d, d star. So now let's solve this, and we can see that we can solve this easily because this is a variable separable differential equation. So all we have to do is to rearrange this so that all of the terms with d are on the left-hand side, and all of the terms that are constant and with time are on the right hand side. So we can rearrange this as 1 plus d d star dd is equal to negative alpha dt. 
and then we can integrate this and the limits of integration that we're going to use so first for the right hand side so this is from time equal to zero to t and for the left hand side at time equal to zero the diameter is di and at time equal to t the diameter is d so let's evaluate the integrals so we'll have d plus d squared over 2 d star and we're evaluating this from di to d okay and then for the right hand side we'll have negative alpha t okay so evaluating this for these limits of integration we'll have d plus d squared over 2 d star minus di minus di squared over 2 d star and this is equal to negative alpha t so we can rearrange this so alpha t this is equal to di minus d plus di squared minus d squared over 2 d star this is the expression we need so the relationship of time with the diameter of the particle d and here alpha is equal to 2 kr cab divided by the molar density so the time it takes for the solid particle to completely dissolve is when the diameter is equal to zero so we just substitute in zero for all of the d's here so the time is t infinity so time it takes to completely dissolve the solid this is equal to one over alpha times the initial diameter plus the square of the initial diameter divided by 2d star it will be useful to express this relationship between time and the particle diameter in terms of the conversion x the conversion x is equal to the initial volume of the particle so that's pi di cube over 6 minus the volume of the particle at any time t so that's pi d cube over 6 divided by the initial volume of the particle so that's pi di cube over 6 we can simplify this to di cube minus d cube all over di cube which we can write as 1 minus d over di raised to 3 and then solving for d over di we'll get 1 minus the conversion x raised to 1 third so let's rewrite this relationship so that we have d over di terms so we can do that by factoring out one of the di's from the first term and di squared from the second term so we will have alpha t is equal to di times 1 minus d over di plus di squared 1 minus d squared over di squared and then we have 2d star in the denominator so let's move one of the di's from the right hand side to the left hand side so we'll have alpha t di this is equal to 1 minus d over di plus di over 2d star times 1 minus d over di squared so now that we have d over di on the right hand side we can use this expression here for d over di in terms of the conversion x 
So let's substitute this into this equation. So we will have alpha t over di. This will be equal to 1 minus, okay, so d over di is equal to this. So we will have 1 minus x raised to 1 third. di over 2 d star 1 minus, okay, so d over di is 1 minus x raised to 1 third, and we have 2 there, so this is 2 thirds. So here we have the ratio of di to d star. So if the initial particle diameter is greater than d star, if this is the case, this is mass transfer controlled. So if di is greater than d star, then this term is significantly larger than this. So we can drop this term. So if it's mass transfer controlled, then alpha t over di is equal to di to d star. 1 minus 1 minus x raised to 2 thirds. Okay, so this second term here. Conversely, if di is less than d star, so we said earlier that if this is the case, this is reaction control. If di is smaller than d star, then this term. So the first term is significantly larger than this, so we can ignore the second term. So alpha t di is equal to 1 minus 1 minus x raised to 1 third. And this one where the two terms appear, this is for mixed regime. When you have both mass transfer and reaction, as the controlling steps. The following slides show what we did on paper and the expressions that we derived. This is the relationship between time and the particle diameter. And this is the time to completely dissolve a particle with diameter di. For your practice problem, I would like you to derive the time that it would take to completely regenerate a catalyst particle of diameter d cat that has been covered with solid deposits out to a diameter of di, as shown in this diagram. The approach is very similar, but you will have to think about the limits of integrations. The expression in the last row is what we derived on paper for the time it takes to achieve a conversion of x. This is for a mixed regime where both mass transfer and surface reaction are the rate limiting steps. Remembering that when the diameter is greater than d star, the process is controlled by mass transfer. And when di is greater than d star, the second term in this expression is larger than the first term. So the expression simplifies to the following when it is mass transfer limited. Similarly, when it is reaction limited, the diameter is less than d star. So the second term is smaller than the first term and the relationship between time and conversion simplifies to the one in the first row. To summarize in this topic, we first looked at catalyst deactivation and described the four typical classes of catalyst deactivation. These are poisoning, where a contaminant species chemically adsorbs on the catalyst active sites and makes them unavailable for the desired reaction. Coking or fouling is when carbon or carbonaceous deposits form on the catalyst surface, blocking sites and pores and preventing the reactants from reaching them. 
Sintering is where small metal crystals coalesce and form larger ones with lower surface area to volume ratios, thus reducing the number of active sites available. Solid phase transformation is when the catalyst structure changes, causing pores to shrink or collapse, again preventing the reactants from reaching the active sites. We then defined catalyst activity as the ratio between the reaction rate at some time t after the catalyst was freshly installed and the reaction rate with the fresh catalyst. The activity slowly decreases with time as the catalyst degrades. Then we looked at a model for regenerating coked or fouled catalyst called the shrinking core model. Here we considered a catalyst pellet of radius R0 with coked core radius of R. So the coking is present from the center of the particle out to a radius of R. We derived the following expression for the time it takes to reduce the core down to a radius R if the core started at R0, meaning the catalyst pellet was completely coked. We also derived the time that it would take to completely regenerate the catalyst pellet, which is the time taken for the core radius R to go down to zero. Finally, we looked at dissolution of solids and derived a similar relationship for the time it takes to reduce the diameter of the solid particles down to a certain size. We derived the following three expressions for the time it takes to achieve a certain conversion x of the solid. That is, the fraction of the solid that has dissolved. You get different expressions depending on whether the dissolution process is surface reaction limited, mass transfer limited, or if both mass transfer and surface reaction are limiting.